And the other thing is that the, a beginner shouldn't be installing operating systems. Go to a user group and f find someone who loves installing s the system to help people. Uh, I've never installed GNU slash Linux. I never saw a point in learning how. There was always someone I could ask to do it for me who already knew how and who wouldn't make any mistakes. So, so I, I, ha I accepted a jailbroken iPad as a gift. Would you consider well, that as acceptable, maybe? If you run it with free software and, and replacing Apple's operating system. Yeah, to some extent it's replaced. It's partially replaced. Well, so only partly. What do, you, what, do you, what do you do you for still self? You non-free software in there. Yeah. Now, there are two different issues here. One is, if something's a computer, I won't accept it if it has non-free software in its system or its applications. My computer has a, I chose this computer because even the BIOS is free. I have no free drivers, no, sorry, I have no proprietary drivers, no proprietary applications, no proprietary nothing. I wouldn't accept, uh, I wouldn't accept a jailbroken iBad because it still would have proprietary software in it, so it would still be uh, an ethical, a giant ethical step down from where I am now. And I wouldn't do that. But the second issue is, suppose something is not a computer. Its job doesn't include installing programs to run. It might, it might be built with a computer inside, but that doesn't directly concern the user. For those things, the question is, does it have malicious features? For instance, is it designed to restrict you or not? Now that is a meaningful question regardless of whether it's built with a computer. It could be built with a special purpose circuit and still designed to restrict you. you now, hardware and software can both have malicious features. So you always have to raise that question even if the device isn't a computer as such. So what do you do about a cell phone? Well, I don't have a cell phone <laughs> uh, because they all have malicious features. They're tracking and surveillance devices. Some cell phones are computers. Those are the so-called smartphones. They are platforms for installing software. Uh, so I wouldn't accept one of those unless it, uh, unless it was all free software. Uh, but even the cell phones that are not computers, that don't offer the possibility of installing any software, they're still <coughs> tracking devices. And they might be surveillance devices, too. Some cell phones can be turned on remotely in eavesdropping mode. They can listen to all the conversation around the user. It's not, not just what's said into the microphone. If it's in the room, it can transmit all the conversation uh, in the room. So it doesn't just have a bug. It is a bug. Yeah. And, and just so people... And it, I, I'm not going to carry around such a device. And I'm sure 20 years ago, if you were if people, if all of you who were old enough to care about this issue had been asked, would you want to carry a device that would always be telling some uh, big company where exactly you are and could be used to listen to conversation around you? You would have said, absolutely not. And yet most of you are doing exactly that. Well, not me. So. Without further ado, may I introduce tonight's speaker? <laughs> Richard Stoller. if you cannot hear me. You see, if I get laughter from all around the room, then I know the system is working. I'm pleased to welcome Richard Stolman as our speaker. Richard, or RMS, is a well-known activist, free software developer, and founder of the Free Software Foundation. He is the author of EMAPS, a lead contributor to the 
new project. And they found it was a new project. Ah, pardon me for not uh, raising it to that level. And he did something with the GNU general uh, public license. <laughs> <laughs> he is a passionate advocate about free software, and I'm sure that will come through in his talk. We are pleased to host him. One procedural note I will ask. But today, he's not going to talk about GNU or free software in general, but about a subject that might turn out to be one of the greatest uh, threats to free software at not all. Not just to free software. No, 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 no. Please let me do this. Okay. You're getting it wrong. <laughs> so, I will follow his suggestion, and I'm really curious and interested, and I'm really looking forward to what Richard will tell us now. So, Richard, please. <clears throat> Rob is particularly interested in intellectual property law and is also interested <laughs> in <laughs> exploring a potential career in litigation. Congratulations. It's too late. What the hell am I supposed to do? What do you want me to do? Start over? Well, if I don't start over, they'll never understand anything. They won't know what it's about. What the hell am I supposed to do? There's no option. I don't know what you think, what you think I'm going to do. It's all useless. It's failed already. It's irrevocably failed. I give up. Fuck it. <laughs> so horrible. I feel so horrible. I, I don't know how to get myself back into thinking about anything except how horrible this is. So, keep going. understand how painful it feels to have a failure. And I, I've had so many things have messed up lately, I feel totally terrible. Uh, 
So, I'll try to make myself continue. It's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> I have to check because you know. I swear, there's, people, there's GNU slash Linux on it. I know you want to take, take this off. <laughs> <laughs> Windows, yeah. Windows 8 thing. It's a piece of shit. No, I know. Could could you scrape this off? Yeah. Um, it comes. It's not impossible. <laughs> Freedom restricting. <laughs> develops web pages. We're actually using a form of compiler when we do our graphical design what we do is converted into code. Now even if Nightmare Notter itself has by some divine miracle managed to escape any and all software patent traps Circular reasoning? I don't know. Anyway. Very justified. Thank you, people. Um, second question, and I will make it quick. I don't want to block the line for too long. The difference between physical manufacturing and software development, and this is actually a comment, how many of us in here, may I have a show of hands, can afford to buy a computer? Considering how you feel about companies such as Facebook, what do you think about the role that such tools played in, for example, the Arab yeah. Spring? Basically, it's an ill wind that blows nobody good. Uh, so Facebook does a bunch of nasty things. Uh, surveillance to a tremendous extent. In fact, I'm working on trying to get a browser modified so that Facebook like buttons will not show up at all. Because if you see one, Facebook is doing surveillance on you through that page. Facebook knows that your IP address visited that page. Well, Facebook shouldn't be allowed to know that. <clears throat> and Facebook uses the user's faces in paid publicity for companies. Facebook does uh, numerous totally nasty things that will never stop. So I'll never use it. Richard, I don't think, uh, requires any introduction to uh, this audience, but uh, I will say he's uh, almost certainly the father of the modern open source movement. Oh, no, sorry. absolutely not. <laughs> if, if I'm the father of open source, it was done by artificial insemination with stolen sperm. I am not a supporter of open source. I do not agree with the basic values of open source. I do not try to participate in open source activities. And when anyone refers to my work with that term, I take offense. You really shouldn't have done that. Apologies. You should have known better. And I do. And it is, a, and, and I, I think that's actually a point that I, I'd like you to, to speak on at some length. But, uh, Certainly, you're the father so of the, the modern free software. The sad thing is that most people think they're very familiar with my work, and what they think my work is, is something I don't even agree with. <laughs> Completely wrong. I founded the free software movement, a movement for computer users' freedom. Freedom to control your own computing, and freedom to cooperate with other people. These are freedoms I believe every computer user is entitled to that must never be taken away. They should be inalienable rights for the user of software. That is the idea of the free software movement. Non-free software, proprietary software, keeps users divided and helpless. 
divided because they're forbidden to share with anyone else, and helpless because they don't have the source code, so they can't control what the software does. And in fact, they're at the mercy of the developer who does control it. So <clears throat> a non-free program functions as an instrument of the power of its developer, power over the users. This is an unjust social system that I wish to wipe out from the world. That is the aim of the free software movement. In order for every user to have freedom, that means there must be no freedom-denying software. I've never installed GNU slash Linux.